Hi everyone. Today's lecture is the second part of post harvest processing of fruits and vegetables in which we will talk about factors affecting the post harvest quality of fruits and vegetables. This lecture would be beneficial for the students preparing for ARS Net Food Technology and also for the students pursuing BSc and MSc courses. There are two types of factors that affects the post harvest quality of fruits and vegetables. These are internal factors and external factors. Internal factors are also known as biological factors whereas external factors are also known as environmental factors. Internal factors are called internal because these factors are taking place inside the food commodity inside the fruits and vegetables whereas external factors take place outside the fruits and vegetables. Internal factors include the respiration rate, ethylene production, transpiration, physiological disorder, physical damage, pathological breakdown. Whereas external factors include temperature, relative humidity, air movement, atmospheric composition. In this lecture, we will talk about all these factors one by one. Now the first internal factor is respiration rate. And here is the equation of cellular respiration. This is a glucose, a carbohydrate, which act as a fuel for cellular respiration. Besides carbohydrates, fats and proteins can be used as fuels in cellular respiration. But glucose is most commonly used to examine the reactions and pathways involved. When glucose reacts with oxygen or we can say that when glucose is oxidized it is converted into simple sugars carbon dioxide is liberated during this process also energy is released in the form of heat which is known as vital heat similarly when fat is used as fuel and when it is oxidized it is converted into glycerol and fatty acids and when protein is used as fuel and when it is oxidized it is converted into amino acids so we can define respiration as a process by which the organic material present in the fruits and vegetables they are converted into simpler compounds with the release of energy so this is a respiration process and the rate at which respiration occurs is known as respiration rate. So we can express respiration rate either as ml of oxygen consumed per kg of fruit per hour or ml of carbon dioxide produced per kg of fruit per hour. Now why we have to calculate the respiration rate? It is because Fruits and vegetables continue to respire even after their harvesting process and the rate at which they respire affects the shelf life of commodity. So we have to control the respiration rate of the commodities so that they can't undergo spoilage. So if respiration rate of fruits and vegetables is very high then their shelf life will be short. So we can say that respiration rate of fruits and vegetables is inversely proportional to their shelf life. Climatic fruits have high respiration rate and they produce high concentration of ethylene gas. High respiration rate and high concentration of ethylene gas, these are the two factors that promotes the ripening of climatic fruits. When unripe, climatic fruits are harvested they can be forced to ripen by treating it with small concentrations of ethylene gas. Whereas non-climatic fruits, these are not capable of continuing their ripening process once they are removed from the plant. They don't display high respiration rate, they don't produce high concentration of ethylene gas. And they can't be forced to ripen by treating with small doses of ethylene. So this is the basic difference between the climatic fruits and non-climatic fruits. These are the examples of climatic fruits and non-climatic fruits. 
Now this is a graph between the rate of respiration and different stages of life of both climatic and non-climatic fruits. Black line represents the climatic fruits whereas red line represents the non-climatic fruits. In previous slides, we have discussed that a ripening process requires two factors. First is high respiration rate and second is production of high concentration of ethylene gas. But in case of non-climatic fruits, they don't display respiration rate as well as production of ethylene. So both the factors are absent. We can see that graph is going downward. It shows that respiration rate and ethylene production do not have effect upon the ripening in the non-climatic fruits. Whereas in climatic fruits, they have high respiration rate. See, the respiration rate is increasing during the ripening process. As well as the fruit start producing ethylene gas. As a result, a peak of respiration rate is formed and that peak is known as climatic rise or climatic peak. Now the second internal factor is ethylene. Ethylene is a natural growth regulator. It is a plant hormone that regulates the growth, development and senescence in the plant tissues. It plays a major role in the ripening of climatic fruits. Climatic fruits produces ethylene in the form of gas during their ripening process. And ethylene hormone is produced by all the tissues of higher plants and microorganisms. The rate of ethylene production increases when we harvest the climatic fruits at their high maturity level or when they face physical injuries or any disease encounter or when the storage atmosphere increased with temperature up to 30 degrees Celsius or the atmosphere is suffering from water stress condition. So these are the factors that increases the rate of ethylene production. But when the climatic fruits are stored at low temperature, at low oxygen level and high carbon dioxide level, then the rate of ethylene production decreases. Ethylene biosynthesis. First of all, methionine is energizing with ATP and form SAM compound, S adenosyl methionine. In the presence of ACC synthase, SAM compound is converted into ACC compound, 1 amino cyclopropane, 1 carboxylic acid. In the presence of ACC oxidase, the ACC compound is oxidized and converted into ethylene. So this flow chart is very important for ARS net exam point of view. Now the third internal factor is transpiration. Transpiration is loss of water from the surfaces of fruits and vegetables by evaporation into the environment. So the outer covering of the commodity is responsible for the regulation of water loss. Transpiration causes different kinds of deterioration in the commodities like nutritional quality loss, quantitative loss, textural quality loss, loss in appearance. Because of these losses, the transpiration process should be controlled. It is controlled either by treating the commodities with waxes or other surface coatings or wrapping with plastic films. Because a coating of wax or wrapping with plastic film will seal the moisture and not allow to evaporate from the surface of commodity. So in this way, the shelf life of the commodity is extended. The other way of controlling the transpiration is by maintenance of high relative humidity and control of air circulation in the storage environment. Now the fourth internal factor is physiological disorders. The physiological disorders in fruits and vegetables are those disorders where there is no pathogen involved and they are more or less due to the unfavorable environmental conditions like nutrition, water, light, soil and so on. 
so physiological disorders in fruits and vegetables occur due to pre-harvest nutrient imbalances or due to extreme low oxygen content and extreme high carbon dioxide content in the storage atmosphere so there are basically three types of physiological disorders these are heat injury freezing injury and chilling injury in heat injury the fruits and vegetables are exposed to the direct sunlight or to the excessive high temperature in freezing injury the fruits and vegetables are exposed to the temperature below the freezing point whereas in chilling injury fruits and vegetables are exposed to the temperature above the freezing point and below the 15 degrees celsius depending upon the type of commodity now the second category is external factors external factors are those factors which take place outside the commodity they are also known as environmental factors the first environmental factor is temperature temperature is very important factor that affects the rate of deterioration of harvested fruits and vegetables for each increase in 10 degree celsius above the optimum temperature the rate of spoilage increases by 2x or 3x it means when we increase 10 degree celsius temperature from the optimum temperature the rate of getting spoiled become double and triple so to control such spoilage we have to cool the commodity immediately after their harvesting we can provide them cold storage having temperature less than 5 degree celsius now the second factor is when we store fruits and vegetables in less oxygen and high o2 storage chamber up to a certain limit of these gases would be beneficial for fruits and vegetables but beyond or below that limit it would show harmful effect on spoilage the third factor is the rate of water loss in fruits depends upon the vapor pressure difference between the commodity and the surrounding and which is influenced by temperature and the relative humidity so these are the external factors that affects the post harvest quality of fruits and vegetables now let us talk about interesting food fact suppose we pluck an unripe tomato a green tomato from the plant as tomato is a climatic fruit it will be ripened within few days after removing it from the plant but we can speed up the process of ripening and we know that for ripening of climatic fruits ethylene plays an important role we place the unripe tomato near the apple and banana because apple and banana produce maximum ethylene gas among other fruits as a result it speeds up the rate of ripening process and green tomato turn into red one in a very short period of time so the production of ethylene results in good ripening of fruit which is acceptable by consumers but when concentration of ethylene increases beyond that optimum level it results in senescence it accelerates the senescence process which increases the susceptibility of microorganisms to grow on the commodity so that's all thanks for watching i hope this lecture will be helpful for you in the next lecture we will talk about the post harvest storage of fruits and vegetables you can follow me on instagram my instagram id is foodtechworld where you can find interesting updates related to food technology